<laughs> okay, sweet. Um, so then, like, throughout all of this, like, what kind of, like, led you guys to start the Bible Over Brews podcast? Well, it was kind of funny because it started as a Bible study. Okay. And, uh, in, our, in our church, we would, uh, we would get together. We called it, we called it the Berean Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a round table and we would go over the lesson and then we would go over content and discussion afterwards. And uh, because it was a nice, fun, open format and it brought a lot of really different, fun aspects and uh, collaborative thoughts together. And uh, eventually Gumby was the one who was like, you know what, we should turn this into a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of the stuff we talked about, it wasn't just like, you're running the mill. Hey, we're going through New Testament today, you know, Matthew today. It was quantum physics. And then we would, we would kind of go through that and how does that align with our creator and, and things like that. Yeah. There was really no holds barred to the topics. Nice. So throughout that, you guys are just like, okay, like this conversation that we're having is actually good for other people to know and other people to partake in. And that kind of has happened organically, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because during, during some of our, of our discussions, we would actually sneak some brews in and <laughs> we, would, we would sit back and have some, some nice craft brews while we we're going over the lessons. So mm -hmm. it kind of contributed to the thought process of where we were going. <laughs> That's so great. Do you guys uh, try to stay local as far as like your guys' like brew choices or you guys' favorites or what, how did that like all pan out for your guys' preferred drinks? So it started strictly with local and, uh, and most, I'd say probably 60% of what we drink is still local. Okay. Um, but then some of our listeners from other areas started asking us to do one, say from California or, you know, uh, Alaska or, and so we started incorporating national beers. Mm -hmm. And then we also had some comments about things like wines and, uh, and liquors as well. So, We've, nice. now started, we've now started incorporating uh, national liquors, beers, uh, and a future episode, we'll do wines as well. So Wow. Dang, that's <laughs> fancy. You guys are like talking about the smokiness of it, different kind of blends to have, you know, what's the good, you guys talking about pairings too? <laughs> like, it's like the one. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, that'd be so great. <laughs> although, um. although, we did have one episode where we did pair some of uh, some wings and stuff. That's so. true. <laughs> Ooh, yes i feel like all beers go with like the mango habanero wings so like you know you can't really go wrong with that good old ipa or citrusy kind of feel a punch for it so i'm assuming you guys do this as like a part-time kind of deal like um just more of a fun kind of a creative like like you know outlet for you guys yeah it, right now that's predominantly what it is it's it's a part-time gig we enjoy it but uh we're slowly expanding and it's it's going to slowly lead the future projects as well um but right now our listenership has been growing steadily mm -hmm. uh, and we've been pulling really good guests in our, our podcasts oh so, like how do you guys like find your guests like from like the audrey app or like from like people locally or how do you guys uh, find your guests for the so, it's so we, we started doing a lot of different studies and mm -hmm. uh, I made contacts with a couple of good scholars um, and then that led to also some authors so we've had like Brian nice. Gadawa on the show um, Brian Gadawa was actually on the show I think four times now really good guy awesome discussions uh, and he's very well researched uh, he's the one that uh, wrote the movie to end all wars with Keeper okay. Sutherland yeah, it's a great um, movie. Oh yeah, and and his books are phenomenal. They're they're very well researched, uh, and they're very action packed. Um, we had Michael Heiser on the show. Uh, he's a, a Semitic scholar. Uh, he was the academic editor for Logos Bible Software. So yeah, so we've been very fortunate, very blessed to have uh, really good people on the show. Yeah, sounds like it. Dang, like that's incredible to be able to have a podcast. You guys have been doing it for a little over a year or how long have you guys been doing the podcast for? Oh, about two years in now. Two years in? And you guys are still staying strong, having good guests on there, having good, um, I guess as far as like the structure goes, like do you guys choose like a book of the Bible to go through and be like, all right, we're going to go like kind of like a sermon or like 
want to say topical or, you know. No, no, no. we're more d- discussionary, but we have five formats we use. Okay. So we do interviews, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh, topicals um, and topicals are more, are more discussionary. We round table most of the topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a presents where we actually take a subject and explore it pretty, d- pretty deeply. Okay. Uh, we do news. The new segments are, are really fun. Um, those ones we, uh, we dig in and uh, round table current, current events. And then we also do one that was called Skeptics Corner, where the skeptics nice. would have to answer us or ask us questions and we yeah. would have to answer. Um, but that turned into a new segment that we now call Skeptics Brulette. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. <laughs> So, so what they do is, is we have our, our resident skeptic and he actually does most of the shows with us mm-hmm. and uh, because he, he's really going to be the one to ask the questions that a lot of our audience is thinking, right? Mm-hmm. So, which is a great dynamic. Right. And then what we'll do is we'll hide like four or five beers and then we'll each pour them into glasses and then taste them one at a time while we answer questions and we try to guess what they are and then we reveal them at the end. Wow. <laughs> that's too good. Um, that's so great how you guys have like been able to like, have different components. I think a lot of podcasts, they, they tend to like be like one specific flavor of, you know, of a situation that like, you're going to get like, Oh, like I'm going to do this podcast about this. Like when it comes into like talking about the Bible, like you can be like, okay, we're going to talk about things that are skeptical or things about, they're a taboo and like having that kind of space like a podcast that is obviously been like well known is called bad christian podcast where they obviously like talk about like different things of like taboos and different things that are in the church that are like healthy or not healthy and like was built christian culture but like for you guys you have like these different uh segments where you can like hit on different topics to keep it fresh and keep it like people engaged in it which is Awesome. So did you guys like go to school to be able to have that background or, you know, like having like mentors around you or how did that kind of pan out for being able to answer these skeptical questions or different things like that? No, it, it was just one thing at a time. Well, and what helps is that each one of us is kind of on our own path. And so that actually broadens the questions. Yeah. Like, uh, like during the course of the two years of the podcast, I, I started as an evangelical and I'm a Catholic. Right. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> you know, Whoa. Uh, Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike is still still a, a staunch evangelical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the Christian Missionary Alliance, so I don't know. I, I always I'm middle of the road on everything, pretty much. So yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and Gumby's kind of the same way. He's kind of he kind of like is on the border, back and forth between different subjects. Um, and then of course Edward, lifelong Catholic. Yeah, we met each other at church. <laughs> <laughs> And and then uh, Steve Steve's pr- pretty much a uh, staunch evangelical as well. Yeah, yeah. And then we have uh, the agnostic, and he's a uh, he's a lot of a, a lot of a lot. Wow, you guys have like the full like a full fledged flavor to it. like every single like you know kind of relig- religion or faith based thing. Like even it's like not faith based, and you get to hear like the different like places where he's like your agnostic friends. Like okay, like well science I, i'm assuming that's his like his main his main course of discussion is like well science proves all this stuff and like all these things are like black and white now because the earth is created in uh whatever by the big bang theory or whatever kind of like si- situation that he believes in and all of us we believe that god is a creator completely and that you know the bible is completely true whether we are in the ballpark of catholicism evangelicalism or like Pentecostal, whatever kind of like flavor you want to take of Jesus. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we all serve God and we all love him. And like, I think that's like the best, that's really cool. Cause I, a lot of times we see um, people that are like, Oh, like I'm going to only stick with people that are going to be the same, the same, but it brings like a lot more conversation into maybe in your, into your guys' podcast as well with like you guys being like Catholic and then him being evangelical and like having hearing different like perspectives that true like you guys get like really good conversation through that oh yeah oh yeah definitely (laughs) it's it opens a lot of discussions and sometimes it's just very philosophically um Mm. 
compatible, and then at other times it gets heated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, both, it, it's right. It's philosophical, but it's also emotional, and it's a lot of mm-hmm. people talk about their emotional path, and then how does that kind of line up with their thoughts, and then the Bible. And I think one of, along the same lines, one of our favorite episodes, or my favorite episodes, we had a, a local um, Muslim on, and we kind of talked Christianity and... Yeah. Islam together and it was really eye-opening because a lot of times it, that's kind of taboo to have those totally uh, you know and so it was really cool yeah so is that like would you say that would be one of your top experiences in your podcast um like kind of endeavor because I can only imagine the conversation that you guys had with the Muslim like with them believing different kinds of things about Jesus and like and then that they're like, okay, like if you're a Jesus, if you follow Jesus, like you're actually are like, we have to kill you. Like that kind of like straight black and white kind of belief that they have, or even like Mormonism or anything like that. There's so, I guess there's so much juice in that conversation to be able to like squeeze out. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised. Like, um, so that's, the, that's the more extremist side of, mm-hmm. like, of the Islamic faith more of them are a little more mainstream. And like he said, like, even though they don't see Jesus as the son of God, they do see him as one of the most exalted of all the prophets. So, you know, so it's really interesting. In fact, he's one of the the only people in all of their Quran and in mm-hmm. all of their uh, auxiliary writings that performs miracles. So, um, and wait, so. Thing with us, with the Mary yeah, you know, and they, honoring Mary, the and and, of and they also believe that Mary was a virgin. So what? Oh my yeah. gosh, I had no idea, man. You should subscribe uh, to our podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, shameless plug. I'm going to subscribe to <laughs> <laughs> the podcast for sure. Okay. And whoa, <laughs> whatever that was. Um, but yeah, see, there's already so much value you guys are bringing into it. Like even with people that have been part of the faith for X amount of years, even x amount of months like there's still so much to learn and grasp and i think just having the conversation is a lot more impactful because we can we can find that there is so much more truth that is um like displayed or the veil is uncovered because it's not just like oh like we're gonna go to a sermon we're gonna get this same topical kind of thing or whatever but we're actually talking about things that are that truly matter not to like say that church doesn't truly matter but like just the fact that we can get into a greater depth of like conversation like the home groups that we have on when we get out of quarantine or whatever like those (laughs) places are for like the the greater conversation but there also can be this place where people don't feel safe to like have those conversations and i think having a conversation amongst friends to be able to be like hey we're gonna hash this through like no bars we don't care if we're gonna be like heated or we're gonna be like upset or say something that we're going to like not really regret but like be honest you know I think transparency is so important within these conversations because yeah there's so much to unpack and it's such a big topic and it's irrelevant you have to be transparent throughout all of it so yeah I'm definitely gonna subscribe to you guys podcast I'm like no questions asked at all (laughs) Yeah, I think you bring up a good point about, you know, how uh, sort of like you, you go to church and what's the difference between maybe church and, and a podcast like ours is we're not really ever trying to get to the bottom of something. Right. We're putting it on the table. And for the most part, we're giving people and including ourselves something to chew on mm-hmm. about that. And, you know, I mean, there's stuff that I've been chewing on for two years now from our podcast. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, heavy stuff it's like a volleyball we just toss it up in the air throw it around eventually somebody just pops it <laughs> <laughs> they're like no like this is this is the way it has to be guys come on <laughs> oh man yes so how i guess like that i, I guess answers the next question of like how do you guys bring value to each of your podcasts with different segments by bringing on different religions and cultures things like that and um do you find yourself like just having conversations among yourselves too like you're like okay like we we are really struggling with this question like let's talk about this on this podcast and like let's go like let's go all in and let the conversation kind of 
let it be what it is, no matter how messy or how clean it is at the end of the day. Like describe yeah. something that would be like a conversation you guys have as like, even though we're all love Jesus, like there's obviously different kind of flavors that we may take from each other. Well, the, the uh, George, the agnostic for one, he, he loves to bring in that God must not be a good God. And then he'll go on and he'll talk about you know, all the bad things that happen to people, right? So, and that's one of like his favorite like sticking points. Right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> How is God good if there's death in the world or if there's genocide or whatever, like these kinds of thoughts. And we have to understand that the, the, the depravity of man is so real. And I think yeah. that's where they're like, no, like I was born into this world without sin and all this stuff. Like, but you were born into sin. Like, <laughs> even, <laughs> even though like, yes, you had no sin when you came out of the womb, you were still born into it. Like, and that means that you were born into a sinful world that needed like God, whether or not he wants to believe that or not. Like this is morals based on the goodness of man then. Right. Well, that's it's the old uh, the old stoicism, right? It's it's Epicurean mm. philosophy, right? Where you say, well, God is either all good, or he's all powerful, but he can't be both. But then you're judging that on man's idea of what good and all powerful is. Right. So it's flawed from the beginning. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I wish that he was on this podcast. I have to do another one with you guys, with him a part of it too. He probably like, come on, guys, what are you guys giving me all this crap right now? What's going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> does he feel well, like he's ever ganged up on, or he's like, I'm just in my own corner over here trying to fight with you guys. <laughs> he does pretty good, actually. Yeah, he holds his own. I think a lot of us, we all try to be respectful. We all like each yeah, other. And, totally. Uh, um, I think Aaron and, and George, they've known each other for a long time, and. Um, they'll do most of the the back and forth in that, um, and then, uh, but he, yeah, I don't think he ever feels ganged up on. He he brings up such popular topics to society because society's kind of going. At least where where I see it is um, more secular, and so mm -hmm. he really is a good pulse to the secular society. So he's asking those questions, and they're they're eternally relevant until we finally mm -hmm. uh, meet our Creator. So. And I yeah. click with, I click with George because like yeah I'm I'm I've always been Catholic like he says but like you know you go through a phase of like my mom makes me go to church so that's <laughs> oh, and then you go to college and then you're like yeah this is stupid and then you move to another city and you're like oh people my age are going to church for fun like <laughs> what's that all about um so maybe I shouldn't feel bad about it and then, like, you know, you go through those phases, so you're not always, like, the super strong person. But sometimes I feel like an agnostic. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah, part totally. of journey. Like, one day I'm, like, super into it. And when I'm in it, I'm in it. And when I'm not, I'm like, where was God on 9-11? <laughs> <laughs> like, did he wake up and be like, oh, that was today? <laughs> I just, you know, there's moments that you have like that where it's not always, like, a... A trajectory of like holy 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 oh nope <laughs> oh, yeah. right. George, i guess yes <laughs> i know because like a lot of times a, a state of mind <laughs> we all have it yeah we we do and i think it's a complete choice as well as a complete like active surrender as well as we have all experienced but yeah like the questions that, that are asked are would you be a believer in jesus if you were not born into a christian home like that's a really big question because i've worked with people overseas and they have had their families slaughtered by christians in the past uh, over in like spain and france and the basque country they're like dude christians they're the worst of worst people and i'm like oh crap i have to come talk to you guys about jesus like dang and they're like asking me these really tough questions of like okay like well how is god good if if your god told your my your people to go and kill my ancestors. I'm like, oh shoot. You know, like that's a really tough place to be because, yeah. you know, it's very personal to them and having that kind of like realization of, okay, like, yeah, I was born into this and like, and I also have to detach myself from that um, reality of being born into something and like, 
okay, like, is this actually true for me? Because I think that's where like people in the world that like, can go to college like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm riding the roller coaster of Jesus. And like, oh, I'm gonna go ride the roller coaster of getting drunk and like going, getting high and all these different kinds of things or sex. Like the, the three things that like we really can go to if we, you know, don't truly have hope, we go to the world and we like want to like just suffocate our own feelings and, and mask them with all these different kinds of things. But you know, what, what really comes down to is like, okay, like, am I willing to say, yes fully to jesus and like allow him the holy spirit to fully come into my life and if he's not going to show up then okay then i'm not going to believe but 10 out of 10 times for myself and for a lot of people is that he does show up and we say okay god like i'm going all in and i'm saying yes to you and i think that's the kind of space where we have to understand of like okay like yeah he can people can rely on positive thought they can rely on like manifesting their own reality, whatever that looks like, or, you know, having this kind of like dream board that they can like put up and be like, this is my life in 2020. Well, guess what guys, like <laughs> that's not your life in 2020. We're in a freaking time of a pandemic. Like that was not in your cards, right? <laughs> you know, like no one can plan for this to be happening, but a lot yeah. of times like people want to be God. Like that's what, you know, the Bible is so clear about. We become our own our own God when we like allow ourselves to be bigger than our like other people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so I actually came out of an abused house where religion was used against me. Mm. So it did take me a while to come back. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How did, how did that kind of journey happen for you to be like, okay, like, yeah, God is, God is good, even though like I've been told that God is good for my whole life, but my parents and my upbringing is just crap. <laughs> like, what's I happening? Didn't, like, totally go against it, you know? Because like most people would be like, "Nope, out of that situation, done with religion. That was yeah. was bad. Yeah, like, just totally done with it." Well, like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I gotta yeah. go. Well, I I was an honest seeker, so like mm. when I came out of it, I was I was mentally unstable at one point borderline suicidal wow um i actually planned out the way i was going to do myself and you know, it's Dang. i was i was in a really bad place mm-hmm. and um but i started going to the library every day and researching and i started re- researching through like eastern re- religions and eastern philosophy and all of a sudden i found out that um c.s lewis a writer i had respected yeah that was a Taoist philosopher because I was researching Taoism. I was like, wow, wait, hold on. You can, that's interesting. Then I found out that Father Thomas Merton was another Christian and he also was into Taoism. I was like, wait, hold on here. <laughs> oh. So, so that started turning me around. I started getting back into it. Still took years and years and years. Um, but I eventually, you know, it, it, it ended up with on a journey into yeah. where I came back to the faith. So. But, that's yeah. awesome man yeah <laughs> i think a lot of times like people can either choose like as of course like to choose jesus or not choose jesus but like they they see things and they want to create their own perception of it they want to be like oh like that's just because i'm like doing the right thing like i did something good so like now i want to receive goodness in my life like i think that's the prosperity, people... Jesus, the, prosperity. <laughs> yeah, the prosperity Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And people just like, oh, if I do enough good, good in my life, like good things will follow, which yeah, I think that is true to an that, extent. That two demons guy, you know, have you seen him? The I won't get in the two demons. Have you seen that guy? No. No. Have you guys look like <laughs> one, the, yes. The, um, yes, that one. Yes. The, the one that's like yes. he's out there talking about, you know, I have a private jet because the commercial flights are like getting in a tube of demons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And like, you know, I, ha- I have this because God has blessed me. Well, God has also blessed the people that don't have private jets. Yeah. He's also blessed the people yeah. that can't afford to ever, won't ever step foot on an airplane. Like he's right. poor people. Mm-hmm. You can be all across the board and be blessed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I I try to point out that if uh, if the gospel, uh, if the gospel was the prosperity gospel and it was true, then you wouldn't have had all of the uh, apostles martyred. So. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. the disciples would not want to be martyred either. Like, gosh, why why would Jesus do that to his own friends that he called like the closest of friends that he loved them? And well, that's how he showed them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so great. So I guess the next question is you guys are awesome, first of all. Like, I really think that a lot of people are going to be able to relate and be able to hear, like, that you guys really do this out of a place of joy, a place of, like, true curiosity, but, like, more just want to explore. And I think that's what people are looking for, to have that really great conversation that you guys all bring to the table. And even George, even though he's not here, he's been, obviously, he's probably a really key component to all of this. Um, <laughs> I would um, say. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so what like continues to inspire your guys' sh show obviously it was like started from a place of a bible study and into a podcast but like what keeps you guys going um each week or every other week to release new episodes alcohol no, it's, 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 there's, there's so many broad ideas. I mean, from archaeology to philosophy to miracles to, I mean, there, there's, there's so many topics. We just, we haven't even scratched the surface of our research. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I, I honestly do try to put a lot of research into our episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's some hours, there, there's a few of our episodes, I put over 20 hours into those just two hour segments you know it's wow i, I will sit down and i'll pour a ton of of uh, research into them and i'll create powerpoint presentations for each one so that way as we're going along and we go from subject to subject you can look out the corner of your eye and you'll see oh we're moving to this this part now you yeah. know so and it keeps the podcast moving it keeps it fresh so but it's there's so much so much research you know, it's, I did a Marian apparitions episode last May with my, with my priest. And, uh, that one took 20 hours of research and we only did five. We only did five. And it, and yeah, it was, it was unreal wow. how much we put into it. Uh, science and the Bible was another one. I put a bunch of research behind it because we had different people who were prominent in the church that moved science in the right direction. Mm hmm and, and they were all people of the church. Yeah. You know? So when people try to say that science is against the church, and they find out that much of science is actually what you know, pushed it forward. So, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. And it's also fun. It's a great, it's a great group. And when yeah. you're, like when you're challenged, I enjoy being challenged on something because it makes you think like, oh, well, why do I think that? You know, why do I believe that? And so, like, maybe I should research that more when I leave here because someone's challenging on with, you know, I'm pointing to an invisible George. That's not <laughs> <laughs> like, well, someone's challenging me and there are days where I feel like him. Mm -hmm. So on this topic. So, like, yeah, it, 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 it's good for, like, your own faith to be challenged. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we uh, Aaron kind of brings up some topics that I wouldn't normally chase down. Let's say, is uh, Christmas a pagan holiday? You know, and, and a lot of people will ask that, and um, he'll go in and he'll put his hours in, and, and I'll come in and I'll snack on peanuts and beer and, and learn a lot, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a beneficial educational. I think that's another thing that propels us as well. There's, he's right. There's, I don't see an end to this tunnel there's so many topics aside from current events too oh and mike, yeah and mike picks out really good beers <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> nice so it sounds like obviously alcohol is like a great component to the <laughs> to the uh podcast and i i can only imagine you guys like have like top choices of your different beers and different things like that but you're so correct when it comes to like we can never fully scratch the surface when it comes to religion when it comes to perspective when it comes to how do we deal with the human condition because there's so much there and if we were to fully understand it i don't believe god would be god because he cannot fully be comprehended in such a 
away or he would, yeah, not be who he says he is. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. Those two things are not right there. Are like, holy crap. Like that's going to be your whole rest of your life, Aaron, of research and un- uncovering. And, you know, then you'll get to heaven and you're like, wow. Like I just like tried my best to like understand who you are. But like now that I'm here, like I was and you're not still going to. Yeah, you're like, wait, I barely even scratched the surface, even though I'm like right in front of you right now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the next question that we have would be, um, first, do you guys know what Poema PDX is, um, other than a podcast? I do not. Sweet. Well, <laughs> it is a platform for creatives. So we sp- specifically work with people in music, videography, podcasting, and photography to um, give them a platform where they can go into this physical space and they're able to go and crush out an album, crush out a video shoot or a photo shoot or a podcast. And we have the the tools there for them to be able to come into this space. And what we said was like, hey, you know, it's so expensive to be a creative if you're going to go into anything but podcasting because podcasting is probably the easiest out of all of them to be able to start. even though like, yeah, it takes time, but like if you have the patience to like learn how to get it all on the platforms and how to like get the right mics and blah, 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 like then, yeah, you completely like won the battle. But when it comes to music and stuff like that, I got my degree in audio engineering and it was like tens of thousands of dollars to record an album. You're like, wow, this is a huge risk. Like I might not even be close to being the next whoever, Michael Jackson, Prince, whoever you want to be. And you're like, is the risk even worth it, you know? So what we <laughs> said was like, the risk is worth for us to go and get the equipment and to like have the physical space out in Portland and to be able to inspire, empower, and give people the voice to be able to create. So like, that's what Poema is. And we're all about like, all about the underdogs as well as the big dogs. But like, we want to like, obviously like give people a platform to be able to create, to have a space and to do what we feel that God's called them to do. Because yeah, like if people said, hey, I wanna go into a million dollars of debt and like go and pursue this thing called music or pursue this thing called film, they're like, there's no way in, in my whole life that I even wanna do that because it's hefty. Like I'd rather just go work at a corporate job, McDonald's, whatever it looks like to make ends meet, you know? <laughs> yeah i know like that sounds miserable to people that have taken this step into that journey but like a lot of times it takes a lot of like brain battling mental like just figuring out how messed up our brain is to like create these fears and anxieties and whatever things that keep you in your room or keep you at a job that you hate every single day of your life but you still go there because you have to get this you know hundred dollar paycheck whatever you know, so like what we said is like, hey, like, let's actually create a place where we can create freedom to creatives and not have them pay their whole entire life out of their pocket, but actually like have a spot where they're able to like pay way less than half their life and like go and pursue that. So how would, it, how would a space like Poema like help you guys as a podcast uh, community? Oh, for us, it's just getting the word out about what we do, the research we do, um, the avenues we're taking, the fact that it's inexhaustible. You know, the, the topics we cover are time immemorial. They've, they've passed through for thousands of years, and the topics don't really change yeah. over history. What's really interesting is they don't really, you know, what they understood as science during the early Grecian days only expanded over time, right? So mm-hmm. the topics the topics are, whether it's philosophical, whether it's scientific, whether it's historical, um, they're really inexhaustible. They're fun to explore. They're applicable to your life. Uh, they're applicable to your personal um, mm-hmm. journey. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think being in a podcast community, you have a lot of guests that would like be able to come into this space because we have people that come to the space that, have walked in they're saying i'm gonna do a photo shoot and then they walk out and they're like man i actually want to do like a music like kind of piece and like go and do that And we have people that are actually there on site that 
can teach them how to play a guitar or teach them how to play a piano or teach them singing or whatever. And like, they can sit in and they can actually like, be like, wow. Like, is this, this a is, physical, is this a physical space <laughs> or like on the internet? It's a physical space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm in uh, Portland. So That's it started awesome. as a podcast because obviously like it's way easy to get the word out, but now like we are in a physical space and it's like really cool to see the, the structure of it to see the you know more of like the dream actually happening because at first i was like there's no way like this is going to be so insane <laughs> to have this space actually be a reality because like there's like even though we've heard so many times like oh yeah like it's so great to like have this space like it's a physical position like i'm like yeah it would be but now that it actually is it's like so cool and to have people come in be inspired actually have this more of like a new fire in their heart to like pursue it instead of feeling like how will i ever get there like this daunting like you know thing that you know people just can create this fear or phobia over their own mind or over own heart is awesome because i can just see people walk in like very curious and leave like very satisfied because they can they actually leave with like a finished complete piece of either a film piece or a musical piece or a podcast series that's recorded for six hours of like, I'm just gonna crush all these podcasts out and like get them out. I'm like, hey, you go do your, you do your thing, man. Like, that's awesome. And then yeah. they feel like way accomplished and actually feel like they're moving forward. And we get to just watch people fully live out their God given dream and talent. So it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I, do, I do like Portland. I go there about once a year. So yeah, you have to come check out the space, man. Yeah, I have to do it. I uh, I, I do uh, Muay Thai out there. So oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to like maybe give you some like free sessions for some free martial arts. I'm all about that. I'm like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be incredible. <laughs> Sweet. Um. So, do you guys have any advice or words of wisdom to give to your people? like that how we're starting a podcast because i think a lot of times we can really overthink things that are like super simple and like just having conversations like this can be very intimidating to people so like how did you guys get over your hump of like going from a bible study or drinking beers on a whatever day of the week and enjoying a conversation to a podcast i would say it's just preparation um know your platform you want to target your audience. Uh, those are their, your two first big ones because otherwise you're not going to know which direction you're going in. Yeah. So know your subject matter, know your audience. But then that next step is keep moving in that direction. So, and, and know what platform you're going to go on. We, we purposely, and actually Mike is the one that found them. Uh, we moved to Anchor because okay. cause Anchor is a great platform and it does all the distribution for you. Yep, that's what I used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're, they're wonderful for that. And they make it really easy. Uh, on top of that, make sure you have uh, decent equipment. You don't need a, a lot to get started, right. but you want to make sure you have at least a decent mic um, so you can get recorded. Usually Gumby actually outfits us. Our, my, uh, our co-host, Gumby, who couldn't make mm-hmm. it tonight, he's actually a professional musician. Wow. And he brings in like these four and $800 mics for us and sets them up. So, <laughs> so nice. yeah, so that, our podcast sounds pretty good. And that's, that's all on Gumby. He's, he's an audiophile. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, but you don't need the $800 mic to get started. Just something nope. decent. And then make sure you set up a, uh, a time flow for each episode. Like I said, I, I do a PowerPoint presentation yeah. that runs behind us at all times, and it keeps the subject matter moving. Because you don't want to stagger too long in one subject, unless it's a good conversation. It's a good conversation. Right, of course. Yeah, keep it going. But as soon as it starts to slow down, you want to move on. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's, and that's how I do it is by keeping the PowerPoint presentation in the background. Sweet. All right. And you, there's three guys on here. So I, I kind of expect three different positions. I feel like, like you're going to be on the researcher side, Aaron. Mike's going to be like on the, like, let's just let's just start it and like, let's see what happens. Is that, is that true? Like you're like, let's just kind of like see what happens if we start this podcast thing. So how it kind of like helped happen for you? 
Yeah, yeah. I think, Aaron, <laughs> you know, he's comfortable behind the wheel. He's a, the driver. I think he also provides what I would think is the most important part to a successful podcast is consistency. Mm. Uh, so now he's in every episode, but he also pushes everybody. You know, life comes at you. So totally. if you're not making money or, or it's not your profession, it's easy to kind of deprioritize. Well, this guy has some sort of genetic thing where he doesn't get tired mm -hmm. and, and, and time doesn't work the same for him. You know, he can <laughs> do more. So he's constantly uh, like, hey. And I also think it helps the size of our group. Um, I don't come every time. Uh, uh, other people do kind of mm -hmm. and chime out. And so it just helps kind of solidify that consistency. Yeah, that's awesome. Just have like an anchor that like would be like someone that would help you stay grounded. And I think that's really important to like, even though you guys are all one like podcast and one like awesome team and you guys can bring so much value to each episode. Like I think having a platform where someone's like, Hey, like I have this crazy bug in my, in my head and my heart that says like, I want to do this no matter what. And like, you want to support your friend at the end of the day. Like, Hey, like even if Aaron goes down this crazy train, like I want to like keep on going with him and like keep on supporting him no matter how crazy it gets. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying Catholicism is a crazy train? <laughs> Ooh, well, I am a, apparently a staunch uh, evangelicalism, so. <laughs> and what about you? What, is, what has led you to, like, any kind of, like, advice you give to people that are in the creative podcasting world? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let um, Mike and uh, Edward say something. Yeah, Edward, go for it. That, that I would give to people in podcasting? I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I never really thought of it before. <laughs> I'm going to defer to Mike here. <laughs> yeah, I think the right. consistency thing was, because uh, this is big. I think what you offer there with the physical space, what we're, we're blessed to have Gumby bring his equipment in and we can sit mm -hmm. down. But still, it takes about an hour setup. So I think yeah. having a facility like yours if, for the locals in your area, I think that would be extremely helpful. Yeah. How many members are, how many people are part of your organ organization? Yeah, so far we only have 15 people, but we've only been around for a year. So we're super fortunate and blessed, like even have people that are even in the space. I think that's crazy that, nice. you know, like we've started this podcast as a podcast, like, a year ago into going to a physical manifestation of a space is awesome to be like, okay, cool. We're in this space as of January, 2020. And then we're like, crap, like freaking COVID came in. And we're like, right. okay, like how do we stay afloat now? Like within that. And like, that's and been. How big, how big is the space? Like how many more creative people can come on board? Oh, a, a ton more can come on board. Um, we it's about like 3,000 square foot. So it's huge because we have to like have a full on like recording room for audio, a full recording room for video, a full like photo room with props for photographers, as well as a little, we have two podcast studios as well with Roadcaster Pros in there where they can just like go and record and like upload or send their file over on a, uh, any kind of like thumb drive. Um, so like, yeah, it's a space where we have, we're still growing and we're just praying and hoping that, you know, once this all passes, it'll just like keep on going and the kind of trajectory away, which I think it will because people are coming out of this thinking like, okay, like I actually can, can do something about my life when it comes to creativity or I can like face my fear because there's a place like Poyama PDX or there's people that actually want to support me because you know I got laid off from my job that I was working forever like and now I'm like this is my quote unquote golden hour and you know people are seeing it in this really amazing positive light which I'm thankful for that people are taking it in a positive spin because it can be definitely be going the other way for sure um <laughs> but the fact that people are starting to realize like hey like this is actually a great opportunity and I give them a full month like for free, like they just like, come in, they can just test out things. And then like after that month free, they're like, okay, like let's start doing the different tiers. Like if you want to use, you know, just like the video stuff or just like one of the platforms and they play, they pay a certain amount or they want to do like two of them or they want to 
have more like different kind of like tiers because I play like Call of Duty I think of like tiers and stuff like that but like thinking of it like in that kind of context of like you're going to get more bang for your buck if you do different things like we offer marketing we offer like booking we offer um like teachings or lessons like if they want to like work with a certain artist or go on tour with an artist or whatever be featured on a podcast so there's different things that we do to keep things like flavorful and also like keep people interested because yeah like it's it's a really amazing place where people can they can feel empowered they can feel like really supported and encouraged instead of like being like okay i hope this person calls me because i've been waiting on the phone forever and i have to like wait for this great opportunity to come into my life which yeah, you know, you're, yes. Like you're creative. Like I do some film acting in my personal life, and mm-hmm. uh, you can't be that way. Like, oh, I hope something yeah. comes out for me. Like, you have to go get the opportunity. Right. Or, exactly. So we're just gonna call you. They're not going to seek you out. No, exactly. They're not going to because to you at that current moment, sad to say, and the reality of it is, you're no one to them until you actually make yourself a somebody to them. Just like right. in anything, like in our pursuit for our partners or pursuit for, you know, whatever it looks like, a career, like no one it's knows you until world. you. It's a big uh, world and there's a lot of people in it and there's always going to be somebody that looks better than you, is more <laughs> than you, has more, more research than you. Right, <laughs> <Aaron. laughs> yes. That's when they you didn't do any. <laughs> That's the case. <laughs> Yeah, well, guys, any like, where can people find you guys um, on social media or a good way to contact you to be on your show like, or so research or resources? Yes, yeah, so that's the cool part. We're on pretty much every, every social media platform, you know, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we have a Patreon page. Nice. Um, and we're like on all the podcast platforms. Okay. So do they find you guys? Is it Bible Over Brews? Um, yeah, BibleOverBrews dot com. It'll actually go to one of our one of our blog pages, and all the links are in there. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being a part of this podcast, and we're excited to have you guys on again, and to have George a part of it too. I think having him on it would be just a really fun uh, episode, just to be able to hear his perspective, or maybe like I don't know, just to get into a heated friendly conversation <laughs> even before you go i have one really important question that's been on my mind oh gosh here we what go do you, do you like the show portlandia and how how <laughs> no no way oh my wow i have never been asked that before but do i like the show portlandia um I like it for its creativity in the way that it projects Portland to be, but it is very inaccurate to what Portland truly is. Okay, so there's not like random like spoon shops and like little like no crazy no. things that wouldn't survive in the real world. No, like it's well. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you got me in a really good corner. Um, <laughs> there are really like quaint shops that are not spoon shops, but there's like little uh, succulent shops and like random things that I don't think are gonna survive. Like sad to say, even though I support all local things because I'm from Portland and I have to. Like the local like farmer's markets and all the things I thought are great. Um, but the thing that they do characterize is that like everyone, everyone's opinion matters. Everyone has like, they have to like believe that like feelings they're just so crazy real in Portland that if you step on someone's toe, you better like just get ready for them to like come after you. Like there's no thick skin here. So coming from Seattle beforehand and like everyone's thick skin there and then coming down to Portland, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got to like really be wise. What I say, I have to be very tact. If I'm not tact, I'm going to be attacked like either from like a personal like way or like indirect way and I'm like just being myself so yeah so like everyone's offended everyone has uh dogs in their purses or like they have random like plants hanging off of their body somewhere like on their ears or in their hair like they're growing something yeah and like 
yeah, everyone just is free to be themselves, this free spirit kind of mantra. Like, yeah, it's very hippy dippy. So if oh. that's what you expect one to be like, I'm I'm sure that is what you will come and encounter. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I hope I made it feel inviting for you to come over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to do research, you can always ask Aaron. He will help you because he comes yeah. here yeah. once yeah. a year. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. So, I, on the other hand, like to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you sleep often, Aaron? I sleep three to five hours a night. Three to five hours? Yeah. Do you have like 10 cups of coffee throughout the day as well? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I average, I average probably, probably three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not too bad. But he doesn't have <laughs> bed. Uh, like uh, the, he'll come in and he'll say, yeah, so I was learning Greek and uh, <laughs> then I woke up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it's just, it happens to be a three hour window that he actually. <laughs> yeah. You were sleeping, you're like, I have to keep on going with my Greek right now. I have to get back into it right now. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, guys, it's been so great to talk to you guys, and we hope to have you on again. And to, for you guys to come check out Portland and come check out the space. If you're ever in town, you can definitely come and check out the Hippy Dippy, check out PDX, check nice. out Poema. And yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Man. Thank Thanks. you. You See too. You later. Thank you. Thanks for having us on.